some really powerful dating advice to cut through the BS and fast. This is something I've done for years, but it's actually Steve Harvey who said it best. Stop telling men what you want them to do. It's too easy for the man to then just play a role, you know, fill a job description to get what he wants from you. This is what works instead. And it's the reason why I do not regret any of my relationships because I chose good men. They just weren't compatible enough for me to choose them as a husband, but I still have all the respect and love for them. Anyway, here's what works. And not just in theory, but in real life. Tell a man what you require a man to be. Set a standard, have boundaries and strong ones. And do not let people tell you that your standards are too high because God supplies. But it's hard or a person makes it hard for no reason trying to tell God that they want something, but they're not even clear on what it is they want. It's like being a baby. <laughs> they want things, but they can't verbalize it to us. So they can't really do anything but cry, hoping we can guess correctly what they need. <laughs> now, granted, God doesn't need to guess because he knows, right? He knows all, but communication with him works the same way as any other method of communication or any other person that you're communicating with. You need to be tuned in so you can receive. Remember back in the day when TVs had those huge antennas on top? Remember when the reception wasn't so good so your family put foil on the tips? <laughs> well, it's hard to receive if you're not in a place to do so. One requirement of receiving is a cleared path of communication so that flow can go both ways. There was something else that Steve Harvey has said before that I found to be fascinating and it had really helped me out at a time in my life. And that's the story that he tells about when he had finally gotten a stable job and he was telling his mom how he was gonna get a car, he was gonna get a new car, he was gonna get a new car. And his mom kept saying, but baby, uh, you still have the old car that ain't working and it's up on cylinder blocks out in the garage, <laughs> right? Out in the driveway. And every time he would, he would hear that from her, he'd be thinking, well, she doesn't get it. She doesn't understand. Forget the old car. I'm trying to tell you I'm about to get something new, right? I'm making some bank. I'm trying to, you know. So finally, one day he asked her, mom why aren't you like excited that i'm telling you that i'm about to do something great i'm about to get a new car why do you keep reminding me of my old car and she said you have to get rid of that car right because you need to make space for the new car right that's when he realized he keeps talking about i'm about to i'm about to get it i'm about to get it but the issue was that he he can't receive because he's blocking the reception with the past, the old car that's run down and don't even work, right? It's on cylinder blocks, but it's in the way of his blessing. There are a lot of us that will carry our past with us and keep that blockage there, keeping us from being able to receive the very things that we want. Mm. Think about it like this. Imagine you're trying to order a pizza and have it delivered to you. Well, isn't it easier to get a pizza delivered to you when you call it a pizza place and not the Chinese takeaway? <laughs> so yes, be very clear. Okay, so now when a man asks you what you want in a partner, here's what a lot of women do. I want a man to take me out. I want a man to buy me flowers. I want a man to have money, which could be coming from his mom. I want a man who's got a good steady job. I want a man to buy me jewelry. No, he'll do it. Even if he's really not that type of guy, he'll do it hoping that you'll reciprocate by doing what he wants you to do. If you catch my drift. None of this stuff matters. It can go as quickly as it came. Besides, one major truth being overlooked here is that loving another person genuinely and unconditionally means that there are no conditions <laughs> and conditions are based on what someone does. You know what true healthy love is? Loving another human being for being. I love my husband because he is 
Sean Sonny Walton. That'll never change. So neither will my love for him. I love men from my past because of who they were, not what they could do for me. That wouldn't be love. That's manipulation. That's using people. Love, whether it's our significant other or even our kids, our parents, our siblings, it's about sharing our states of being with one another. We are love. First, we discover love through God loving us. That then helps us love ourselves. No more being worried about other people's opinions when God's opinion is really the only one that counts. And since God says that you have been made righteous in his eyes through Christ's finished work, you now have the right, the authority to step in and claim your inheritance since a death and the resurrection, of course, took place in Christ. Your inheritance is all the promises of God that in Christ is always yes and in him, amen. I actually heard come out of someone's mouth that God answers your prayers with a yes, no, or maybe. And this was some pastor speaking. Not mine though. <laughs> I was like, uh, that's not biblical. That's not true. And I want to see more people get delivered from this false teaching and limiting belief. God is not about yes, no, maybe so. He is yes. You truly do have blessed assurance. So if you have high standards, please know that God can and will answer and deliver on that order. Now, whether you believe in the word of God is honestly irrelevant to me <laughs> because I still want you to have good success in life no matter what. I just believe that it is through Christ, but I will not put you down if you disagree or if you find some other things that I may share don't resonate with you. I do not judge. And I know there are plenty of people with different beliefs who do the same manifesting techniques and it works for them all. So I'm hoping some tips that I give help as many people as possible, whether you agree with my beliefs or not. Okay, so how do you answer that question of what do you want in a man? Well, instead of telling a man what you want them to do, tell them the type of man you require them to be. Need an example? I just wanted a man with character. I did not want a man to just love God. See, that's something to do. <laughs> Plus, they can just go around saying how much they love God and quote some scriptures and go to church every week. The devil can quote scripture too, although it's inaccurate because he purposely leaves some things out to rob you of your righteousness and rob you of certain truths that would empower you. And besides, doing all that doesn't display an actual relationship of closeness with him. See, I wanted a man who was kind, honest, transparent. I wanted a man who was an intellectual, not just book smart, not just street smart, right? I wanted a compassionate man as well. I wanted a man who knew how to be strong and yet gentle at the same time. I wanted a man who was secure in his manhood and masculinity without having to overdo it and overcompensate, right? I wanted a man who understood and received grace and knew how to then impart that same type of grace to me. I wanted a man who was filled with the love of God, more so than trying to run around, trying to prove something to earn God's love and approval when the word tells us it's a gift. I wanted a man confident in his identity in Christ and that because he was not just filled with God's love, he was overflowing with it, that that overflow would then flow into me and into our relationship and our life together. See, these are things you can't fake. And even if you try, it won't last very long. Me saying, I want a man with certain qualities that remind me of my dad. See, a man can't fake that. <laughs> he either already needs to be that on his own as he is or not. And see, that helps you to filter through all that dating noise. And to a woman who trains her discernment through the spirit, just like she trains her body in the gym, child, oh, it's going to come off as phony no matter how hard that man tries to keep up the facade and try to make it look genuine. Child, I know a fake when I see a fake. <laughs> And even if I happen to miss it, 
the Lord protects me just like in Psalm 91 and he will reveal it to me. And I actually have a video on a story about that. So be sure to subscribe so you can catch it. So yeah, you can't fake being something because it will require you to know if my definition of what it means to be that fits yours. And I won't necessarily tell you that. I'm typically just observing the person as they are in their own habitat. <laughs> you know, the word actually tells us what you should be discerning for in a man and what a man should be discerning in a woman. I'll do separate videos on that. So make sure you subscribe and listen, bring your Bible with you and look and see that what I'm saying has been right there all this time. God has no problem with you asking questions and you know what? Neither do I. <laughs> Besides, how on earth can you be fake and playing games and roles while dating, expecting an honest and true and healthy, committed love in a marriage? You can't be fake expecting it to become real and long lasting. Just doesn't make sense. <laughs> Yet people are taught by dating gurus online to go out here playing games and masking who you are. No, be proud of the woman God has developed you into being and be her. A man with the right discernment who is worthy of you will recognize that just like the servant who was praying to find a wife for Isaac. He asked God for good success, grace, discernment, and he got it. So will you and so will the right candidates for you to be with. I will definitely do a super deep dive into these things inside of my new membership, The Love Lounge. So be sure to get on the waiting list for when that opens. In the meantime, I have some amazingly powerful resources right now on my website, like my four week expert guided virtual mentorship program, or as I like to call it, an experience called the Soulmate Attraction Experience. It's a powerful and practical six week love manifestation program. It includes a companion guide filled with over 80 pages of guided exercises, affirmations, and techniques. Woo wee! This experience is designed to align your energy and intentions with attracting your soulmate. And trust me, if I could manifest a husband in just four months and six days with what's inside here, why can't you also successfully elevate your love life? In addition, right now, the Soulmate Attraction Experience is bundled inside of my Best Life Bundle with three more of my most popular resources to help you elevate your lifestyle in all the areas I talk about here on my channel. Life, love, family, and finances. Check my description for the link to find out how to get that $357.96 bundle for just seven bucks. I really hope you've enjoyed this video enough to at least give me a thumbs up. Hello. <laughs> if you got even one thing out of it, or if you laughed or chuckled or giggled at least once, uh, well, now you got to subscribe and click the bell for notifications because I am full of fun that you just don't want to miss out on. <laughs> All right, well, stay blessed and I will see you in the next video.